All right, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're tuning in from, and welcome to another live stream here on Facebook Live. My name is Patrick France. I'm a senior instructor here at VectorVest, and every single Thursday, I bring you guys the updates and how to make money with the Stock Advisory app. So before we jump into uh, to everything here today, uh, if you guys can hear me out there, let me make sure the audio is coming through good for you guys. Uh, once we have confirmation of that, we'll go ahead and get right into it here today. Today's session is going to be pretty easy, uh, pretty light for the most part. You know, just really um, showing you how simple VectorVest makes your investing, especially, you know, focus with uh, an ETF. You know, there's a lot of different ETFs out there. And with one simple indicator, VectorVest can really help guide which ETFs you should be in, when you should be getting out. So ETFs are a great way to make money in the market. They help, uh, you know, reduce some of your risk, add exp or add um, exposure to other parts of the market, other stocks that you may not typically get into. So there's a lot of benefits with the ETF uh, industry as a whole or ETFs in general. And that's what we're going to be focusing on is how to really utilize those to get the most out of them here. Um, so give me one second here. Let me make sure I'm not seeing the comments coming through. So I want to make sure you guys can see me it shows that I'm live, so we should be good. Uh, if you guys can see this and everything's good, hit that like button right now. Let me know uh, by hitting that like button since for some reason I'm not seeing any comments coming through uh, through Facebook here. So uh, if you guys can hear me out there, if you guys can see me, let's see if we can get to 20 likes real quick. We're at 14. Let's see if we can get 20 likes and then that way I can see that uh, you know we are, we are good to go. It's going to make it a little difficult towards the end uh, where we analyze your own stocks, but we'll make do with that here for now. Um, there we go. All right. Awesome. So it looks like you guys can hear me out there. Uh, don't know why I'm not seeing the comments. Um, let me do this. I've got an idea. Um, I'm going to pull up the comments on my phone so that way I can see them there. Let me just turn the volume off. Awesome. So I've got comments here. I can see comments on my phone coming through. So appreciate it, guys. All right. Let's get into it here today. So starting off right now, as we can see, the market is neutral. We're three ticks into the yellow. Therefore, Vectorvest advocates buying or advoc uh, does not advocate buying any stock at this time. We scroll down. As always, we get the daily market timing. Uh, timing video here where we update you every single night on what's going on in the market, talk about any major trends you need to be aware of. So if you're not already a subscriber, click on the link in the description of today's video and you can sign up for free for a two week free trial and you can watch that nightly update to make sure that you never get caught off guard by anything going on in the market. After that, we then scroll down, take a look at the color guard. So we can see those three yellow lights all across the board right now, which tells us we have a mixed signal right now because the way we get those colors, we look at the direction or we look at the uh, indicator and base them on day over day and week over week. And right now we can see the price is flat on a day over day basis and actually lower on a week over week basis. So therefore we are currently yellow. We'd have to get back above that 6532 level, which would take a nice rally in the market here at this current time, but not to say it's not possible. We look at the RT, the RT is also flat since it is flat day over day, but lower week over week. So therefore it is still remaining yellow. If it drops below yesterday's uh, closing of 0.96, we could see that red light show up in the RT as well. And then we look at the buy to sell ratio, which is lower day over day and week over week. But since it still remains above one for the time being, that does show strength in the overall market. So we do see a yellow light in that as well. These three indicators are comprised to come up with the MTI or the market timing indicator. This looks at the underlying trend of the market and it's cast on a scale of zero to two to make it easy for you out there. So above one shows the underlying trend is up, below one shows us the underlying trend is down. After that, we then get the trend column which shows two parts of the trend each and every day. The first part is referred to as the primary wave which shows the short term or simply weekly trend of the market. 
as we can see, it is down since the price of the VectorVest composite is lower than it was five trading days earlier at that 65.32 level. As I just mentioned, to see that green light continue in the price column here today, we would need to see the price of the VectorVest composite get above that 65.32 threshold to um, you know start to see some change really in the color guard here right now. Then the second part is just looking at the underlying trend or reiterating the MTI. So since the MTI is above one, the uh, underlying trend of the market is also up. After that, we then get the calls column, which stands for our confirmed calls. Now, our confirmed calls are our most conservative timing system. They're our last signal we get to get into the market and our last signal we get to get out. As you can see for the time being, we still remain in a confirmed up situation. All right. So we've got that. Last but not least, on the homepage, we always like to take a look at the advanced declines. And when we look at the advanced declines, we like to see a two to one bias in a certain direction. So for example, if uh, the market's moving higher, we wanna see twice as many stocks moving up than moving down. That way we have probability on our side that if we get into a new position here, we have a over 50% chance of that, that stock is going uh, with the market and continuing to move higher. Um, right now, we're sitting at 42% of stocks moving higher and 45% of stocks moving lower, therefore telling us that we uh, don't have that two to one bias, more of a one to one bias here and not strong enough to really give us some good indications um, that the market is moving higher right now. All right, so I just found the comments. They actually changed this. So Facebook has now changed this up a little bit. Give me one second. Let me get this set up here. All righty. This will make it a lot easier. So I can see everybody. <laughs> they put the comments in an own, its own separate box down here towards the bottom of my screen. So finally glad or glad I found it. And now I can actually see everybody chiming in gonna make today's session a little bit easier here so far. All right, so let me just adjust this. It's good to know that they changed this. All right, awesome. Uh, let's pull a, all right, so before, uh, let me just give everybody a shout out. Uh, Tala Necker, Nec, Nectarios, uh, Jim, uh, David, Mushek, Good morning, good morning everybody. Maria, good morning, Ed, glad you're doing well. Good morning, Ross. Um, can we use Profit Locker ProGraph on ETFs? So you can, um, but not with the mobile app currently. Um, but stay tuned, keep your eyes on uh, upcoming content we have coming out for you guys and you'll hopefully learn more about that soon, uh, very, very soon. All right. So once again, advanced declines pretty much flat, not really seeing a strong direction one way or the other here today. Good morning, Bo. And then we look at the major indices, we see the Dow is down four tenths of a percent, NASDAQ's down about a tenth, S&P's down about two tenths of a percent, but the VectorVest composite slightly in the green, up a penny, um, basically flat though here. So, you know, for the most part, everything is uh, pretty light here today. Not a whole lot going on, not a whole lot uh, that really stands out from first glance. All right, so let's get into it. ETFs, if you're not familiar with them, ETF stands for exchange traded fund. Exchange traded funds are like baskets of stocks. The best example that you know most people can, can uh, follow along with are looking at, let's say the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 is a index of 500 different companies in the US market. Instead of going out and buying all 500 different companies and then having to own 500 different stocks, you can buy a ETF that has essentially, um, you know, all 500 companies into one single holding to make it easier for you. So you get exposure to all 500 stocks in the S&P 500, the best, the worst, and you get more of an aggregate of that, which makes it a lot easier to, uh, you know, follow along with the trends. Granted, you're not gonna be having some of those high flyers that can help you outperform the market, but you're also not gonna be getting into some of those duds that can underperform the market and hurt the portfolio. So ETFs are a great avenue to be able to invest into the market to gain some exposure without 
uh, taking on a lot of extra risk that can sometimes be involved with individual stocks. So what we're going to do starting off, we could build a watch list and we will build a watch list here in a little bit, but we want to take a look at some of the places that VectorVest has for you right, all, or right out of the gate. So that way you can find these ETFs faster and easier um, than anywhere else out there. So one of the first places to always start is the premium watch list. Under the premium watch list, we have two ETF uh, watch lists that we've actually built from our live streams here on Facebook. We have index ETFs bullish and index ETFs bull or bearish. So we go to index ETFs bullish. You know, market's been moving up nicely. Start off with that. And we'll talk about the bearish here in a second. Now, looking at the ETFs, you'll notice some that are, they're, they're not all the same. They're all trading, let's say, uh, where is it? The NASDAQ or the Dow. Here's UDAO, which is down 0.84%. But then you also see another Dow down 0.5%. And that's because of the leverage. So leverage or ETFs come in both uh, single or non-leveraged and leveraged. And leverage essentially means that they're moving at an exponential rate or uh, 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 increased rate, if you will. So taking back or going back to the SPY or the S&P 500 example. If the S&P 500 goes up, let's say 1%, then a double leverage ETF will go up 200 or 2% and a triple leverage ETF will go up 3%. Now, the more aggressive you are, the more likely you're going to lean towards uh, those double and triple leverage ETFs. The less aggressive you are, the more conservative you are, the more likely you are to be leaning towards more of the uh, non-leveraged ETFs. For a short-term trader, you can really take advantage of some of the triple leverage ETFs to capture some extra gains and outperform. But at the same time, they do have more risk because if the index doesn't go your way, if it starts selling off, then that moves three times as fast downward uh, rather than just being in a non-leverage that moves at a one-to-one -one rate there. Um, John saying, but all ETFs are not the same. How to select the right one? Well, John, you're in the right spot here today. Uh, Maria is saying, I bought an ETF, IFRA, which consists of infrastructure and is not listed in VectorVest. So Maria, if you ever find any stocks that are not listed in VectorVest or ETFs that are not listed in VectorVest, uh, take a screenshot of it, you know, with your broker or wherever you're at. Um, and then under, where is it? Under the VectorVest views, you can find the email. I'll just go ahead and pull it up real quick. Go to the Friday's report and you have new stock requests, right? Oh right there, and angh at vectorvest.com. Just shoot that screenshot over, put it as new symbol request, and all new symbols get added uh, every Thursday, and any stocks that get delisted every Thursday, uh, or go through every Thursday. So Thursday tends to be um, the rebalancing day. So this is good news for everybody. If you ever find any stock, you can all do the same thing. If you ever find any stock that you can't find in VectorVest that you want tracked in VectorVest, all you got to do is shoot an email to angh at vectorvest.com and we can get that added into the database. Typically we do all at or all additions and uh, removals every or once a week there. All right. So getting back into it, the UDAO, we see it's down 0.9%, whereas DDM down 0.6%, let's say. Well, let's go ahead and pull it up. Take a look at the stock analysis report. And right at the very top, you can see it corresponds triple 300% of the daily performance of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So that tells us 300% right there. That means it's moving at a three to one leverage compared to the Dow. Well, DDM is down about a third less than what that was. So most likely that's a double leverage ETF. So we go ahead and click on it. Go ahead and view the stock analysis report or analysis report corresponds to twice or 200% the daily performance of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Well, there we go. If you want non-leverage, we scroll down some more because think about it. Non-leverage ETFs are most likely going to be moving slower. And since this list is sorted by RT, they're going to be further down the list. So DIA down 0.27 tells us that's at a one-to-one -one rate there. Um, let's see... Paul's asking, do we track penny stocks? Yes, we do, Paul. 
Um, not all of them because there's a lot of them that don't trade or don't have any activity. But yes, we do track a lot of penny stocks. Um, which stocks do you recommend for swing trade? Well, right now we're focused on ETFs right now, Antonio. Um, you know, <laughs> we've had a lot of videos over the last few months on, on specific stocks and really not really looking at a lot of ETFs. So, uh, if you want to go back and watch some of our replays on some of our stock selection ideas, you can definitely do so. All right. Now here's the great thing about ETFs. We've looked at the bullish or uh, the, yeah, the bullish ETFs. So as the market goes up, these go up as well, but you can also take advantage of ETFs to play the market to the downside as well without having to have a margin account. Up until contra ETFs were invented, the only real ways to play the market to the downside was by trading or shorting stocks, which requires margin you can't do in a retirement account, or by utilizing options, which can be extremely risky and adds a lot of leverage. And if you're not right on your dates or not right on a few small things, those can really go against you and you can lose a lot quickly if you're not sure, if not familiar with what you're doing with options. So ETFs are a great way to help hedge your portfolio, gain exposure to the market, take advantage of a downward move. So that way you're not just either sitting in cash or holding through the downturn and, and hoping it comes back. You can actually really utilize it to Offset those losses, keep your portfolio afloat, or if you're aggressive, make a profit in that down market as well. Um, do you track OTC stocks? Yeah, we do. So here's the great thing with them. We go down, we find the index ETFs bearish right next to it. Oh. Give me one second. Every single week, I always lose, pull that right back up. I always lose internet access right during this middle point. All right, getting back into it, going back into the premium watch list, scroll down, Contra ETFs. All right, so here we go. Contra ETFs, market's been rallying, so expect to see some pullbacks or some lower evaluations in these Contra ETFs. Once again, it's sorted by RT to bring the highest RT or the the strongest upward trending ETFs to the top and the lowest uh, trending or the worst trending stocks to the bottom. So with the markets going up, these are most likely gonna be going down and we can see that, that all these RTs are all below the level of one with the triple leverage being at the very bottom because they're moving down way faster than a double or single leverage ETF would. So we get into it, we see one on China, Here's one on the Russell, which if you guys haven't checked it out, I did a video on the major indices and talking specifically about the Russell um, over on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already gone and watched it, I definitely recommend checking that out. But uh, I'm not gonna, not gonna talk too much about that right now, but the Russell has really been showing a lot of weakness here right, or, uh, lately and could be a good, uh, good ETF to keep an eye on. Now this is, let's just double check. We view the stock analysis report. This is a non-leverage ETF. You'll notice it doesn't say anything about two to three times leverage. So obviously it's a one-to-one -one or non-leverage ETF. We scroll back. If you wanna take advantage of, if you're more aggressive, well, here's one that's two times leveraged. Let me just double check that. So you double, or you click on that. And then you can see inverse two or minus 2% or two times the daily return. So there's your double. And then if you scroll down even more, SRTY, go to the analysis report three times. So this allows you, no matter what type of investor you are, whether you're more conservative or really aggressive, there's always gonna be something that you can find that suits your personal investment style. That's one of the great things about them is because they're based on broad market movements in um, different areas of the market, you can really find a lot of ETFs specific to what you're looking for. You know, if you're big into retail, let's say, you can buy an ETF on retail. If your portfolios, let's say, mostly tech stocks, the FANG stocks, well, if the market goes down and the NASDAQ goes down, your portfolio is gonna take a big hit if you're heavy into one specific area. 
but utilizing contra ETFs, you can offset that by buying the contra ETF on the NASDAQ itself, therefore making a perfect hedge if you're in or if you're invested heavily into the NASDAQ or into tech stocks in general. So it allows you a lot of flexibility to really manage your portfolio um, effectively and the way you want to. Now, one thing I will say, contra ETFs, because the market tends to go up more than it tends to go down, I wouldn't consider contra ETFs as an investment. I would consider contra ETFs as a tool for your investments. What I mean is, you know, an investment in the in the most uh, basic sense of it essentially is, you know, if you buy into something, you expect it to continue to go up over time and you want it to grow over time. Well, markets tend to go up more than they go down. So contra ETFs are going to continue to go down over time rather than go up over time. So therefore, that's not really an investment. But when the market does start to uh, fall or have a correction, these will start going up, which therefore they're a tool to help you maintain your portfolio, keep your um, keep the money coming in, keep the portfolio afloat or turn a profit in your portfolio. So that way you're not taking two steps forward and one step back every time you're taking two steps forward and then either staying there or two, taking two steps forward, then another step forward and then another two steps forward and so on and so on. So that's the beauty with these ETFs right now. So this is some great ideas that you guys can look at based upon the major indices for the most part in the US. So you have your Dow, your NASDAQ, your Russell, uh, your S&P, all of those can be found right in these lists. Another place to go is if we go down to the screeners, I believe, let's go featured screens. And we got ETFs, pairs, bullish and bearish. So once again, if you're trying to prepare yourself for, let's say, the breakdown on the Russell, well, here's some you have, once again, good areas to get into, such as large caps, the major indices, but also to gain some exposure, you have oil in here, you have silver in here, you have biotechs in here, gold in here. So this will help you expand your, uh, expand your horizons to get into other areas of the market that aren't the major indices. Now, one of the good rules of thumb that I typically go over with people when talking about ETFs is stick with what you're familiar with. If you're somebody who, you know, primarily trades NASDAQ, um, then at that point, don't go and buy a contra ETF on, let's say, China, the Yang, you know, because that has nothing to do with it. If you see a bunch of people you know, talking about, oh, gold's going down right now. So you want to go buy a contra ETF on gold, but you don't ever really trade gold. You don't follow it too much. Most likely you probably shouldn't, you probably shouldn't, uh, you know, just go right in. Do your due diligence, do your analysis and make sure you're on the right side of things and make sure you're sticking with stuff that you're familiar with. Don't go buy ETFs on something that you're not familiar with because then you're not really sure what exactly you're gonna be doing with it, what exactly it's looking at, and there can cause a lot of issues with that as well. Uh, what is the difference between ETF versus a regular stock? So, um, Howard, that's a great question. So a stock is an individual company. An ETF is a basket of companies, essentially. Um, or, you know, a, a specific commodity. For example, gold. Um, so that's the difference. Instead of buying, once again, instead of buying one share of every stock in the S&P 500, so therefore you're owning 500 different stocks, you could buy one share of an ETF that gives you the same exposure as buying one share of every single stock in the S&P 500. So it's more of a basket of stocks that you're buying at that point rather than just an individual company. All right, so now hopefully everybody's got a good idea on that. Um, hang I, I'm not the not the crypto guy. So if you're wanting crypto advice, this is not going to be the place for you today. Sorry to break it to you. Um, all right. So getting back into it. Let's say we've put a couple of these. Let's build our watch list now. We go into the watch list section. We have ETFs, Facebook. Let's go delete this one. Create a new watch list. We'll put some ETFs in here. So SPY. Um, let's go T 
TQQQ for the triple NASDAQ. Let's go SDOW for the triple against the Dow. Um, let's go drip. Let's put in uh, GLD for gold. Um, T triple Q got that in there. Yang will put in that. SRTY put in that. Let's say we wanted uh, biotech exposure. So BIO, let's see. It's a biotech U B I O. Not finding that one. Um, H I B S. All right, H I B S. High beta. Okay. Um, F T E K. Fuel tech N V. That doesn't look like an ETF. Um, if you guys are just throwing out ticker symbols, U S Global Jets. That looks like an ETF. Uh, what's the biotech one? I'm trying to remember it. Um, LABD. There we go. LABD. That's a bearish three times. Thank you for that, Dia. Uh, then LABU. So we've got 10 of them here right now. We'll just call this ETFs. You know, this is just random, uh, random list. Nothing per particular about any of them, but just to show you how easy this can be. So right now, by default, a watch list sorts your stocks by VST. Well, we know that when looking at an ETF, we'll take T or TQQQ. Since it's not an individual stock, they're not going to have quarterly earnings reports and statements that you can take advantage of. So therefore, the fundamental analysis is pretty easy. VectorVest just always pegs those right at the level of one. Therefore, when looking at an ETF, your focus is going to be RT and RT only. Coincidentally, once you actually own a stock or own an ETF or own anything, the most important factor you need to be aware of as an individual is the RT. Because at that point, you need to know whether the stock's going up or going down. You're not worried about the fundamentals because those are more longer term things. Once you get into a stock, all you need to worry about or all you focus on is whether or not that stock is making me money or losing me money. So we can see with TQQ, it's up. It has an RT of 1.59 telling us it's in a really strong uptrend right now. So yeah, this, this ETF is making us money. Therefore, it's a good thing to get into. Um, going back to it, knowing that, all we have to do is reach, uh, sort it by RT, bring up the worst, and here we go. So this is where you can start to do your cherry picking from and help you weed out your portfolio of ETFs to know which ones are hurting your portfolio the most, which ones you start need to be, uh, or which ones you start uh, should start slimming down on, and basically doing all the work for you. A simple strategy by looking at ETFs is, you know, whenever the RT goes from above one to below one, that tells us that that short-term uptrend is now dissipating and is now turned to a downtrend, therefore telling us it's not favorable, giving you a simple, easy to follow exit strategy. Now. As always, you could get out before this. You don't have to wait for it to break below one, but that's a simple answer. That's a simple approach. Um, and then you could get out a little bit beforehand if you have stops, those types of things. But just following a very, very basic uh, plan, that could be an effective strategy to help you you know, make money here with it. Um, I prefer to look at RT times CI rather than just RT. I agree. Unfortunately, we don't have the RT times CI uh, sort in the app. Um, there was something about it. I got, I tried getting it in a while ago. There was something about it. I can take it back to our devs, see if we can, you know, possibly change that. But for right now, there was something about that sort that couldn't be added into the mobile the way it was. Um, and I haven't heard an update on that for uh, since then. But yeah, RT times CI, if you're in the desktop app, is a great sort on ETFs as well. Uh, but with just using the, the mobile app itself, RT does plenty, uh, does plenty on its own to make it a reliable source to use. So looking at it, drip, probably not one of the best ones to be into right now. SRTY. Now, SRTY in a downtrend, obviously we're not going to be holding on to this for right now, but at the same time, if you want to build a watch list, one for your bulls, one for your bears, or if you just want to use the bullish and bearish watch list we already have pre-built for you, 
you can definitely do that. And this helps you keep everything all together, keep your positions all in one simple place. So that way you can easily make your decisions a lot faster. When you pull up your watch list at night and all of a sudden you notice SRTY, let's say, has an RT of 0.54. You've been watching it over the next few days and all of a sudden you notice that RT breaks above one. That could be an early entry or early signal to start jumping on board with it. So that way you can capture the bigger run and you know, yeah, you may miss a, miss out a little bit on that price move from 0.5 to one, but you're waiting for that consistency and you're waiting for that short-term uptrend to really establish itself. Because as I've said earlier, the market tends to go up more than it goes down and you don't wanna jump the gun. You don't wanna try to you know front run some of these trades because on a triple leverage like this, that can really, um, bite you or come back to bite you you know not too far after that um i was asking can you talk about the decay with leverage etfs i don't understand that um some of them do some don't um what do you mean by decay of leverage ETFs? so i think i know where you're going with that i'm going to try to address it as much as i possibly can uh but i think you're referring to the balancing that they do so the fund managers themselves have to balance these etfs uh, to try to keep keep it at a specific rate to the underlying fund. So let's say uh, the Dow or the Dow, for example, because it has leverage in there, they have to try to keep it balanced by you know adding shares, removing shares, whatever they need to do, adding money, removing money to the fund, whatever they need to do to rebalance it. So that way it tracks at a at the rate it's supposed to with the underlying fund. You know small little changes over time build up and compound and that can really throw off the performance so it doesn't necessarily match that one-to-one -one. um and that's why they have to rebalance etfs now the leverage etfs and the way they rebalance it i've, I've talked about that in the past i'm not going to get into too much of it right now um you know if you try to hold long term those tr doubles and triples you could see some discrepancies over time, but those are typically going to be more of the short-term trades, not the long-term trades, uh, especially the triple leverage um, contra ETFs. Um, and that's why you have, you know, the contra ETFs when they, um, you'll see them a lot of times, they have reverse splits to help keep that price in line with the underlying asset uh, or, you know, uh, regular splits or reverse splits. So you have a lot there that goes on to keep those balanced the way they are. Um, and that could cause some decay. So that is something to be careful of with that. Uh, but typically those are on the leverage ETFs and with those leverage ETFs, you're not going to be into them long enough to get sideswiped essentially by that rebalancing or have that be a major factor in it. All right. So hopefully that answers your guys' questions. If you guys have any questions on, on how to make this easy, you know, as always, you can always give our support a call. They'd be glad to help you out, walk you through building your watch list if you haven't done so already. And with that, let's go ahead and start to take a look at the stocks that you guys want to analyze here today. So let me know your thoughts on this. Let me know the stocks you guys want to take a look at in the comments below. And as always, if you haven't already hit that like button, Hit that right now, hit that share button. All that helps me out and continues to grow our great community we have here on Facebook. So if you haven't done that already, go ahead and do that right now. Um, how often are the watch list names updated? Um, whenever I want there, Mark, <laughs> to be completely honest. I manage most of those watch lists. Uh, so it, it's whenever I, I have the time and whenever I feel that there's a necess uh, or need for that. All right. Um, so let's see, we've got nail coming in in AIL looking at an ETF makes it easy. So as always, the RV RS are always going to be pegged at one. Therefore, your primary focus is going to be RT 1.67 tells us it's in a really strong short term uptrend. Therefore, this ETF is favorable right now. Um, let me go ahead. Uh, Chipotle. CMG. All right. So breaking it down now that we have an actual stock to look at. All four of these indicators you see here, the RV, RS, RT, and VST are always going to be pegged on a scale of zero to two. Above one is good. Below one is bad. So 
First one we come to is RV or the our relative value, which is looking at the long-term potential of the stock over the next one to three years. At 1.16, we expect to see the stock outperform a AAA corporate bond or a relatively safe investment by roughly 16% over the next one to three years. The next we look at is the RS or relative safety. And this is looking at the longevity of their financial statements, making sure that they have a consistency to outperform or consistency to grow their earnings quarter over quarter, year over year. At 1.23 tells us this stock has uh, great longevity, good financials, and that essentially means less risk associated with the stock. Then we look at the timing 1.14 tells us it's in a steady uptrend overall. So therefore the stock's favorable. Um, let's see, ZM, ZM, good long-term potential, less risk associated with it. However, you're in a downtrend right now. We've seen a lot of these tech stocks getting hit hard because they've had a phenomenal rally all throughout 2020. And it looks like, you know, people are protecting their profits. They got overvalued. Um, and they've been taking that, that beating ever since really, you know, last fall coming into the beginning of this year. Um, overall, it's a good stock, but just the timing is not right right now. Uh, NDA. NDA. I'm not finding that there, Chris. Uh, extra off. ROF. There we go. All right. So extra off. Poor long-term potential. A lot of risk associated with it. You're in a steady decline. Overall, the stock is not favorable. Um, Let's see, BAC, <laughs> just throwing throwing underhanded pitches at me here today, or today, Jay. So Bank of America, poor long-term potential, but solid fundamentals, so less risk associated with it. You have a really nice, steady short-term uptrend. Overall, stock's definitely favorable. Uh, PSEC, about average long-term potential, a little bit more risk than the average stock out there. Uh, you do have a really nice short-term uptrend. So overall, the stock's favorable. Um, ERX. All right, so ERX, another ETF. Main focus is RT at 1.16. It is in a short-term uptrend, so therefore it is favorable. One thing just to look at, putting it on a graph here so you guys can all see this as well. That RT has been slowly pulling back, which means it's still in a short-term uptrend overall but that short-term momentum is dissipating, which tells us we need to pay closer attention to it. Maybe not pulling the trigger quite yet, but something we need to be focused on uh, going forward. And if it definitely, if it, we see that RT break below one, that's our final signal or final line to sand essentially. Uh, LLY, so LLY, Lily, good long-term potential, less risk associated with this stock. However, right now is not the time to be uh, in it. Good stock, not the right time. Um, TIGR, TIGR, average long-term potential, does have a lot of risk associated with it. You're in a steady decline. Overall, not favorable right now. Um, ORN, ORN has good long-term potential, but does have a little bit of risk associated with that long-term potential. Uh, you are in a slight decline right now on a short-term basis. The stock is good because of that RV, but the timing is not there and it does have a lot of risk. So therefore, probably staying out of it. All right, OZSC. OZSC, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with this thing. It's dropping like a rock. Overall, it's not favorable. Even it's up 27.5% here today that's not enough to make the short-term trend change from down to up. Um, FVRR, you know, most likely that's a one day thing and one day does not make a trend. So keep that in mind when you look at the RT as well. So FVRR, uh, good long-term potential, does have a little bit of more risk associated with it. You're in a steady decline right now. So overall the stock's not favorable. Um, NDA, NDA, once again, not finding that there, Chris, Ebon, E-B-O-N, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with this thing, it's dropping like a rock, therefore, this is definitely not favorable. Uh, B-L-O-K, B 
BLOK, another ETF looking at blockchain, therefore, or I believe, um, therefore your primary focus is going to be RT at 1.13. It is still in a short-term uptrend, therefore making it favorable. Taking a look, the RT has been lower or been moving lower over the last couple of weeks. So definitely keeping an eye on it, but for now it still is in a short-term uptrend. Um, let's see, ARKK. ARKK, looking at an ETF, Primary focus is RT at 0.86 in a steady decline. Therefore, not favorable right now. Um, coin, all right. So coin, poor long-term potential, a lot of risk associated with it. You're in a steady decline. Overall, it's not favorable. I don't think anybody could disagree with that analysis on it, Jay. All right, MCD. Let's go take a look at McDonald's. Poor long-term potential, but... You do have some solid fundamentals, so less risk associated with it. You have that longevity factor going for it. Timing at 1.22 tells us it's in a nice steady uptrend, so overall, definitely favorable. Um, see what else we got. Um, SCHG. Large cap growth ETF. RT at 1.27, nice steady uptrend, therefore definitely favorable. Um, TPOR. So direction on DT bull three times. So a three time leverage ETF, not familiar with what the DT is standing for. Uh, direction on daily transportation. Okay, so the Dow daily transportation three time rather than the industrials, the transportations. 1.93, really nice, strong uptrend. Definitely going to make this favorable right now. Um, LPX. LPX. Good long-term potential. Less risk associated with it. Still in a really nice, strong, short-term uptrend. So, yeah, this is still definitely favorable right now. Um, apps. Good long-term potential. Less risk associated with it. However, the timing is not there. Timing below one tells us it's in a slight decline right now, therefore telling us to hold off from it. Um, uh, RGR, RGR, good long-term potential, but does have a little bit more risk associated with it. You're in a slight uptrend. That 1.1 is just the bare minimum, bare minimum of typically what we like to look for. Don't really have that. Stock is favorable right now, but I need to see that RT continue to pick up. Um, if it drops below that 1.1 threshold, that's really a, a clear warning sign telling us that momentum is waning right now. All right, uh, DFEN. DFEN, Aerospace ETF, Aerospace and Defense. 1.64, really nice short-term uptrend. Therefore, this is definitely favorable. Uh, SINO. SINO, great long-term potential. It has... Less or has some additional risk associated with it, though. You're falling like a rock at 0.2. Can't really get lower. Than, I mean, it could technically get lower than that, but it's very rare to see something move lower than that right now. Um, so overall, definitely not favorable here. Um, on the timing, what's your logic behind the timing meter? Um, Tao, I'm not sure I'm following you. What do you mean the timing meter? Like the RT? Uh, NNDM? NNDM, poor long-term potential, uh, a lot of risk associated with it, falling like a rock, therefore clearly not favorable. Um, IPO, we'll do a couple more here for today. So IPO, 0.89 on the RT with an ETF like this, tells us it's in a slight decline, therefore it's not favorable right now. All right, so uh, the timing meter, the RT, to give a little insight into that for you. Um, the RT is a short-term price trend indicator, as I've said in the past. It's I don't know the exact formula because it is a proprietary formula. Only person that knows the exact formula is our founder, Dr. Delito. Uh, but from a basic or rudimentary understanding of it, it's looking at price action compared to you know a week ago, two weeks ago, a month ago, quarter ago, six months ago, a year ago, and it's looking at a lot of different time frames. So. It's not just looking at, you know, a set certain period like a moving average would. And that's because the RT is more than just a trend indicator. It's not just showing you whether or not it's in an uptrend or a downtrend 
or else it would just be always at either two, zero, or, or two, one, or zero. But it's looking at the magnitude of that uptrend or downtrend as well. So if one is essentially flat or you know just going sideways, as it picks up higher two to get to two, that means the stock's increasing in momentum, not only in an uptrend, but increasing in momentum as well. And just on the inverse, if it's below one and the closer to zero it is, doesn't just mean it's in a downtrend, but the closer to zero means the stronger the downtrend is. So it's looking at you know multiple different time frames to give us a good idea of um, not only the direction but the magnitude of that direction as well. All right, um, SPLV. We'll do two more after this one. SPLV. So another ETF. I love seeing these ETFs, especially with today. Uh, with looking at it. RT of 1.26 tells us it's in a steady consistent uptrend right now. So therefore, still favorable. Uh, Lake, L-A-K-E, L-A-K-E, good long-term potential, less risk associated with it. But however, not the time to be bullish in it, not the time to be long. At 0.57, it tells us it is in a steady decline. Therefore, the stock is favorable, but not the time to be into it. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and do FOX. So Fox, a little bit below average long-term potential, a little bit more risk associated with it. So this does make it more of a speculative play right now. However, the timing at 1.22 tells us that it is in a nice steady uptrend currently. Therefore, the stock is slightly favorable. Realistically, I'd call it average. Um, ah, gotta watch the recording. So Maria, thank you for saying that because that actually uh, brought up something that I wanted to let everybody know. So going forward, um, you can find our replays of all of our live sessions on our Facebook page as always, but we're also going to make sure that they're always added on Thursdays around six o'clock Eastern over on our YouTube page as well. Um, they may That may change just a little bit but for the most part, they're going to be the six o'clock release on our YouTube page as well. So if you happen to miss any of our uh, live streams or you wanna go back and rewatch it, don't know where to find it on, on Facebook, you can always go over to our YouTube channel. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that like button, uh, You know, become a subscriber over on our YouTube page, turn on that notification bell so you get updates to that. But um, at six o'clock on Thursdays, these recordings of our live stream should be on our YouTube channel as well. So hopefully it makes it a little bit easier for you guys to be able to find that, um, having multiple places you can go to find it. All right, so, that is going to be the market here today. Looking back to recap quickly, we see we are now one tick into the green. Therefore, we're mildly bullish and VectorVest advocates buying safe, undervalued stocks that are rising in price at this time. We scroll down to see where that came from, came from the price action. So we were trading at 6509 when we first started. Said, you know, we had to see a nice little rally coming into the market to see that green light appear. Looks like we got it. Got it by about eight cents, actually, which is definitely a favorable sign. Um, we'd like to see the the RT and the BSR also pick up as well. Um, but looking at the primary wave, the primary wave has gone from down when we first started to now back to up. Let's see if we're going to hold that. As always, that primary wave will change throughout the day. Uh, but to get that official signal, we do have to close the market out like that. Um, so we still have got plenty of time for things to change, but for right now, we do see a primary wave up, which is, you know, on a short-term basis is definitely a good sign. Looking at the advanced declines, we've seen a big turnaround here. We were about a one-to-one -one rate when we first started. Now we're at 57% of stocks moving higher and 33% of stocks moving lower. Not, not the best, but definitely improving and getting close to that two-to-one rate that we like to see. Taking a look at the major indices, the Dow is down about a tenth of a percent now. NASDAQ's actually back in the green, up about a third of a percent. S&P is basically flat right now. Overall, VectorVest Composite up just shy of a half a percent. So we've seen almost a half a percent rise on the VectorVest Composite just within the last hour or so um, that we've been live. So with that, once again, I appreciate everybody tuning in, coming out here today and joining us for our sessions. If you've enjoyed today's session, you haven't already hit that like button, hit that like button right now, hit that share button, share it with your friends, share it with your family, help your friends become financially independent by utilizing one of the easiest to use apps out there um, to make your investment decisions, the Stock Advisory app. 
Also, if I didn't get to one of your stocks here today, I do apologize. There's been a lot of them coming out. Uh, Facebook made some overnight changes on how they, uh, on where their comments are showing up now. So I had a little uh, hiccup with that right out of the gate this morning. I do apologize for that. But if I missed your, uh, missed your comment or I missed a question, um, you know, you can always give our support a call. Or if you want to analyze your stocks just like we did here, click on the link in the description of today's video. Sign up for the two-week free trial. You can do this on your own. Or if you're already a subscriber and you haven't downloaded the app, what are you doing? <laughs> Download the app, sign in using your regular username, password, and you can do this on your own as well, wherever you're at. So on that, I hope you all have a great rest of your trading day. Take care, be safe out there, and I'll see you guys next week as we kick off another live session here on Facebook Live. Bye for now, everybody.